And then our next question comes from Aguzan. And I apologize because I'm pretty sure I might have messed oh, up with this. I feel like but... we butcher so many names on this podcast. <laughs> um, and they ask, when you guys get a job, do you take the company's values into consideration to see if they match your own values? Ooh. Which is an interesting topic. I think Aguzan is kind of touching on the fact of like, you know, maybe it's an ethical thing. Maybe there's sustainability you know, issues. Do you go work for a company that just you know, just makes a bunch of plastic crap or you do you go for some nonprofit company and he, he's asking kind of what, what, what should he do? I think they're, or they are in school. Right. Yeah. That's interesting because now, now that I think about that and I think about the answer to my last question, I think about how, how do, how does your philosophy then fit into the company's philosophy or goals? It is interesting because when you put, you know, I think about like bigger companies like Apple or Microsoft who have an established design. Well, right. I don't know about Microsoft, but Apple <laughs> ha- has a very established design language. And if you come into that environment having your own philosophy and wanting to incorporate that into the design, how does that play out? Right. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. And that's 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 another piece of the puzzle that that I like that I'm working on figuring out. But it, it does vary for sure. Yeah. I think Apple would be more stringent on that. Whereas maybe, you know, a smaller company that doesn't have a really strong design language could, you know, really take on anything. Right. Right. Um, I, so far in my career, I haven't had a moment where I'm that concerned. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think that I've ever hit a point where, I'm considering working with somebody and there are ethical dilemmas there, along with that. Yeah, I think we, I think uh, Oguzan also mentioned the one question we answered on the Square One live, mm. live podcast where oh, someone asked yeah. about, you know, would you design a grenade or some sort of really extreme ethical decision or design? Right. Um, you know, I think when it gets to that extreme level, you can certainly make a decision. Yeah. But if you're thinking about like sustainability and more, um, you know, bottom or like, I don't know, nit- nitty gritty kind of value things. Honestly, in this in this uh, career, it's very competitive. So if you can get a job and the company doesn't exactly match all your values, like. In my opinion, you should take it. Like, I don't think you need to hold out for the the dream company because guess what? That's not that's not coming right out of school. Yeah, you got to work your way up there. Yeah, right out of school. Unfortunately, like you, if you haven't proved yourself to the degree of uh, somebody who gets hired by Kanye West, <laughs> um, you uh, sometimes you you have to kind of I don't want to say settle, but you have to. I think you the have word. to you have to take you have to take a job that's given to you in order to start to build up a network. Yeah, and and you know some of some of your ideas about sort of the ethical implications of things can like evolve in that process and yeah. change during that process. And I I think the, there's a key thing to understand that I don't think students get is that you are a designer who's going to go work for a company and the company runs because they make money. Right. And that means that money's involved and that means that they need to sell things, which, you know, can go down the route of the other last week's topic of <laughs> why should we even be designers anymore? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think you got to accept the fact that, Hey, you're going to be making products that may or may not align perfectly with your values and if you can if you can be flexible, then eventually, hopefully, you can reach that level where yeah. you can actually work for a company or build a company that establishes those values that you believe in. Right. And actually, it, so it's interesting because we got we got a response. Um, we were we were kind of asking the question about management at companies like moving up through a company. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, we got a response. Oh gosh, I'm. I'm blanking on the person's name. I think my Gmail is open. Um, I feel like the guy's name is Alex. Um, but uh, he actually told us, because uh, we were thinking that the only way that you could move up through a company 
is through management. Right. So you can be like a, a senior level designer and then eventually like a creative director and then a VP of design. And yeah. Then, and, and the higher up you go, the less design work you actually do. Right. But uh, what this person was saying, yeah. and, if we can figure out his name, oh, but gosh. it's fine. I, I know it's I know it's there. I think it's higher up. <laughs> Bear with us for a second. I think it's Ricky. Ricky. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Rick, oh yeah, R- Ricky. What's his last name? Ricky Biddle. Ricky Biddle. So he works. I think he works at Whirlpool. Um, and he was saying that at at Whirlpool, there's this position. And and you're closer to the email, so you might be able to find it. Yeah, it's something like he, master does master yeah, design. R- Ricky touches on the fact that uh, there's this great program where you can either move up the management route or the mastery route. And essentially, if you move up the mastery route, you just become kind of this senior level designer. And of course, you still get pay bumps every year, but you kind of in in my head, it's you kind of become this more. I don't know, f- more of a like a principal designer, or, like f- f- philosophical designer, like mm-hmm. where you kind of have where where you know maybe at Whirlpool you're like a, they need a new microwave, so they give it to you, and like you kind of create the vision for the microwave, mm-hmm. and you can really focus on that. Yeah. Whereas the management route is a lot more like yeah managing. Yeah, I think it's um I think it's it's an avenue through which designers can continue to design right um whereas traditionally it's it's sort of it's sort of been or in more traditional business paths it's always from you know the person executing to to the manager right uh deliberating but um so you know in that way i feel like if you enter into a company and you rise through the ranks sort of traditionally like you can have a real effect on how the product is done. For sure. Yeah, you can go into one of these companies that does a lot more, uh, or maybe they don't have as much sustainability, and if you rise up in that company, yeah. you can start implementing some of those changes. Yeah, you know? and even even in some companies, I will say, looking back on my first job experience, I had a lot of impact over the final design, mm-hmm. even as a junior designer. And like we kind of touched on this in the last episode when you were talking about your cat toy, but I feel like there's always avenues in which you can, you know, um, bring in some of those, some of your personal ethics into the work. For sure. For sure. um, And uh, hopefully be able to sleep at night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That was a great question. Thanks for sending in a Guzan. Uh, 